Hi, and thank you for watching our video tutorial on using the Cost of Capital Professional, a tool that provides business valuators and analysts with equity risk premia, size premia, risk-free rates, and cost of equity estimates in an easy-to-use platform. Before we begin, we'd like to note that more information about the platform, data fields, data sources, methodology, and more are available on the FAQ page. You can find a link to the FAQ page available under the User References section of the platform, as well as on the Cost of Capital Professional product page. On the User Input page, you will first enter information about your engagement, including company name and valuation date. You may enter a valuation date as historical as December 31, 1993, or as current as today. After you've added information about your engagement, you may select a start year, end year, and whether you want to use arithmetic or geometric means. The start year and end year will be the time period over which your equity risk premiums and size premiums are computed. You may select the earliest available start year, which is 1928, or you may select a custom start year, which can be any year from 1928 to the present. For example, we will select the earliest year available. When you use a December 31st valuation date, you have the option of using an end year that corresponds with your valuation date, or you can use the prior year. In our example, we will select the end year that corresponds with our valuation date. After you've completed the user input section, the tabs below will become accessible. The first tab, the RFR, or risk-free rate tab, will provide yields for the 10-year and 20-year treasury bond based on your valuation date. December 31, 2017 was a Sunday, so the most recent yields prior to this date are provided, which are for December 29, 2017. We also have the option of selecting our own custom risk-free rate and have the option of including any associated notes next to our selection. For our example, we will select the 20-year treasury bond. The next tab, the ERP, or Equity Risk Premium tab, will provide historical and forward-looking equity risk premium. The first two options under the Center for Research and Securities Prices, or CRISP, section are the historical equity risk premium using the 10-year Treasury bond and the 20-year Treasury bond. Note that the platform provides the average annual return for the S&P 500 for your specified time period, as well as the return for the Treasury bond, so you can easily audit how the equity risk premium was calculated. The next three equity risk premium options are provided by Dr. Aswath Demodaran, used with permission. The first Demodaran equity risk premium is historical, while the other two are implied or forward-looking. For more information on Dr. Demodaran's implied ERPs, please visit the Cost of Capital Professional FAQ page. Finally, you may select your own custom equity risk premium and include any associated notes next to your selection. For our example, we will select the crisp historical equity risk premium computed using a 20-year treasury bond. On the next tab, the historical size premium tab, we have S&P 500 size premiums and beta adjusted size premiums. This information is sourced from crisp. To learn more about these size premiums, please visit the Cost of Capital Professional FAQ page. The size premiums are organized by decile as well as by combined deciles. The size measure used to group the companies together is market capitalization, also referred to as market value of equity. The count for each decile is provided in the count column. The breakpoints, also known as the minimum and maximum market capitalization, are provided for each decile. The average annual return is provided for each decile, as is the annual average return for the S&P 500. This allows you to easily audit how the S&P 500 size premium was calculated. The decile beta is also provided, so that you may verify how the beta adjusted size premium was calculated. For our example, we will select the 10th decile. On the next tab, the COE, or Cost of Equity tab, we have access to the build-up model and to the capital asset pricing model. We can see that our selections for the risk-free rate, equity risk premium, and size premium have been carried over from the prior tabs. Under the build-up model, 
The S&P 500 size premium is the default, but we can select the beta adjusted size premium, should we choose. We also can input an unsystematic risk premium, or an industry risk premium and company specific risk premium. In the industry risk premium section, we can either input a value for an industry risk premium, or we can input an industry beta, and an industry risk premium will be calculated. On the FAQ page, there is a link to Dr. DeModeran's industry betas, which can be used in the build-up model section, or in the capital asset pricing model section below. Under the capital asset pricing model, we can input a CAPM beta and company-specific risk premium. The beta adjusted size premium is the default, but we can select the S&P 500 size premium, should we choose. We also have the option to enter any custom notes related to any variable in the corresponding field. For our example, we will use the buildup model, and we will enter a value for industry beta, so that an industry risk premium will be computed, and we will enter a value for company-specific risk. On the next tab, the WAC, or Weighted Average Cost of Capital tab, we can compute our weighted average cost of capital. The cost of equity is automatically pulled in from our prior work. We enter the percentage of the capital structure that is the equity portion and the platform will infer the debt portion automatically. We also enter the borrowing rate and the tax rate. We also have the option to enter any custom nodes in the corresponding fields. We will go ahead and populate these fields for our example. On the next tab, the Summary tab, we have a summary of our cost of equity calculation and our weighted average cost of capital calculation. We have all the documentation associated with our selected variables, the formula that was used, and any associated notes that we may have entered from the prior tabs. If we select the Copy option, we can paste this summary into our report or other document. If we'd like to export our calculation to Excel, we can select the Download tab, then click on the Excel icon. In our Excel file, we have three worksheets, User Inputs, Selections and Calculations, and Summary. The User Input worksheet documents the inputs we made on the User Input section of the Cost of Capital Professional. The Selections and Calculations worksheet provides our selected inputs, our cost of equity calculation, our weighted average cost of capital calculation, and any related citations. The Summary worksheet provides the summary text for our selected inputs, cost of equity calculation, and weighted average cost of capital calculation. Back on the Cost of Capital platform, if we decide we'd like to save our calculation, we can select the Save option in the upper right side of the page. If we decide to retrieve our save calculation at some point in the future, we can do so using the Recent option. Should we have any questions about the Cost of Capital Professional, we can navigate to the User References tab, where we will find a link to the FAQ page, as well as a link to contact BVR with questions or feedback. This concludes our video tutorial on using the Cost of Capital Professional.